What should we do about the coronavirus? Well, it's pretty clear, given the high transmission rates and the long incubation period, the fact that many people infected are either asymptomatic or only have very lower level and very general symptoms, that containment is impossible. The virus will come to meet you at some point. You no longer have to travel anywhere to get it. The problem with this virus, uh, I don't think it is the dreaded disease X, although some people at the WHO have speculated that it might be. I don't think it is. But it's not so much the more than 50%, possibly 60% of those people who only have uh, mild symptoms. We don't have to worry about them so much. But a significant number of people uh, are becoming ill enough to require hospital care. The figures are very noisy at the moment, but it looks as if that percentage might be about 15%. And maybe 10 to 15% of those people will die. Worse than uh, most flus, not as bad as SARS. It's uh, a disease that I think is going to be difficult to filter out from all the rest of the noise because this is a flu season in many parts of the world and people are dying of flu anyway. I think it's certainly going to cause a lot of economic dislocation. And the, perhaps what is the greatest worry is the impact that this will have on global supply chains. Uh, the world's economy is already overextended. We've been heading towards a, a tipping point for some time, and this probably is going to be the black swan that tips us over the edge into a global recession. Politicians love that, of course, because it gives them an excuse. The excuse is their appalling policies which have actually created the situation. What can we do to defend ourselves? There are no specific defenses available at this time. And it's not clear that there will be. But I think in general it's a good idea to try and make yourself as healthy as you possibly can. We know that the people who are most likely to die are the elderly and those with a serious comorbidity. We know that with the tools that we have available, we can improve people's general health. We can basically improve their metabolic age. Now, this is not a specific form of protection, but it is a general form of protection. It may well be a way in which we can reduce the general impact of this virus at the level of our personal circles, our families, our communities, and possibly nationally. In addition to that, we have very powerful natural anti-inflammatory strategies which may be protective at late stages in the disease where it is possible that a, a cytokine storm is involved. This is a little bit speculative. Some scientists are saying that this may be playing a role. Uh, I don't know if this is a consensus yet. Another way of looking at this is to gauge the impact of the pandemic on food supplies. Now, already we've seen in uh, various parts of the world, such as Italy, where numbers of people have been infected, that there has been panic buying and uh, the supermarket shelves are being stripped and food supplies are running out. Uh, people who haven't taken precautions are going to find, I think, it difficult over the next few weeks, possibly months, to maintain a good nutritional status. That's actually another good reason, in my view, to make sure that you have access to the right pharmaconutritional tools, to make sure you have the right basic nutrients, even if the only foods that are available are stripped all the way back down to basics. These are generally preventative and protective strategies, I believe. There are other things that you can do which may be more specific. And for those of you who are interested, uh, have a look at my blog, Dr. Paul Clayton, drpaulclayton.eu, where you'll find details of some other strategies, a little bit experimental, but in my view very promising, complete with links and uh, descriptions of how you can get hold of products and how you can use them. I hope this is of some use to you, and I wish you all the best of luck.